Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back again with an update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the final full week of April, Monday to Friday, 26th until the 30th. Retail, low print and inputs, plus our Cumulus Spotlight where you can potentially win a prize. Let's take a look at this week's retail. New Pokemon Snap is releasing this week on April 30th. Oh man, I am legit very excited about this one. I used to play the original on the N64 over and over again back in the day. And I think it's still one of the very few N64 games that I still own. I didn't sell off in my collection. You take pictures of Pokemon in their natural habitat. It's just genius. Now, since I am super excited about it, I do what I normally do and go into complete blackout. Aside from the original trailer, I've not seen a single bit of info about it since I just want to see it for myself. I don't want to be spoiled, but it looked brilliant. And it looks like they're even making a little picture printing machine for your Switch as well. I don't know if that was real or not, but man, I would love that. I cannot wait for this on April 30th. And Alolan Jojo, John and the Rumor, and JCrod7776, it's their pick of the week. Battle Axe was a successful Kickstarter game that's now coming to fruition. It looks to be a pretty cool modern retro arcade side-scrolling brawler thingy mabob. I believe that's an industry term. This comes in either a standard version or a badge edition, as Numbskull Games always like to do. This is the European release, and I'll talk about the US version very soon, so hold on, North American dudes. R-Type Final 2 is the most contradictory name since, like, Final Fantasy 2. The original game was a PS2 game that was a swan song for the legendary side-scrolling shooter series. I think I read that by the time the PS2 was around, they kind of thought that the side-scrolling shmups had reached their zenith, and it might be best to call it a day. Well, they'd never played Steridon. Now, you know, shmups are still going strong, and so this Kickstarter was very welcomed by fans. I know R-Type fans either absolutely loved the original final or just didn't like it. It was very divisive. I've never played it, but I'd like to play this one. I do love a good shmup, and this is releasing via NIS America of all companies, and so there's a nice little collector's edition available too. We do have a couple of catch-ups this week as well. WRC9 is releasing in the US. It's a rally game. Who'd have thought it? Pretty decent. Check out Juan's review. Taxi Chaos is releasing in Europe this week as well. This is Crazy Taxi, just without the crazy. I liked it, but it definitely needed more oomph. And they should have probably hired me to do some voiceover work for it. Taxi Chaos! Come on, guys. Anyways, Crypt of the Necro Dancer is releasing in the US this week with a standard edition as well as a collector's edition. This was released in Europe already, so it's nice to finally see it getting well deserved release in America. And this is Alyssa's pick of the week. Alright, the Low Prince Liberated is getting its European physical release this week thanks to Pixel Heart. This is an action adventure game that's set out in a graphic novel style presentation. It's supposedly pretty good. And this enhanced edition features nice bonuses such as two story DLCs, full English voiceover, and gameplay enhancements. This is limited to just 5,000 copies in Europe. And if you buy it from Pixel Heart's website, you can get a nice, decent, 15% off if you use our personal discount code WATCHLIBA. Yes, watch Liba. It's on the screen right now. And that's good until the end of May. You can get 15% off. That's more than 5 euros, which is nothing to laugh about. It's not an affiliate or anything. We don't earn anything. It's just for you guys. If you're in the US, then VGNY once again are getting their version. This is due out for the next week or two since it's a European production with different artwork. So head over there if you live in the US. And this is Santa Tartaruga's pick of the week. Abzu is getting a physical release this week thanks to Super Rare Games. This is a beautiful experience of a game as you dive into the depths of the sea. One of the most zen experiences out there. Juan gave this a full review back in the day and I highly recommend you check it out for the full lowdown. If you're looking for chill beauty then this will be the one for you. You know we all love explosions, robots, anime girls with big, you know, but you know sometimes you just gotta dive into the deep sea and just relax. Sadly, it's only a couple of hours long. You'll be begging for more by the end. There are 5,000 units with a bunch of them in a Steenbok edition, which I know you all like. Be there on Thursday, and this is God of Resin's Pick of the Week. Star Renegades was announced by Strictly Limited and In In Games. Yes, just a day or so after the devs told me to wait a couple of months before an announcement. Well, 
Strictly Limited announced it anyways. Uh, I guess they just must have panicked about the impending Japanese release. But I do kind of hate it when I get lied to. It's happened a few times before where devs told me one thing and then it's, the next day is completely wrong information. You know, you could just, you know, either be vague or don't answer me at all. Just don't, don't lie to me, guys. I don't like it. So yeah, this is getting a retail release in the future, uh, but Strictly Limited have their special versions. There is a limited edition which comes with a manual, different art and numbering, plus a collector's edition which nets you a box, art book, OST, a diorama poster, card, sticker, it's limited to 2,500 units. Knowing Strictly Limited, you'll get this in about, I don't know, a year's time or so, although it's technically due for October, November. But it is out in Japan this week, which I will mention in a second. Anyways, this Strictly version is Dane Wilkinson's Pick of the Week. Berg Fables was put up for order last week via Limited Run Games. This is a much anticipated physical release of a great RPG that tries to go with the original Paper Mario style and it works really well. Many people say it's the best Paper Mario game since Thousand Year Door. This is one of the very few releases that almost made me open my wallets to give to Limited Run. But that was thwarted by the box art because they've just made it look so dark and gloomy. It's a bright colourful game, why is it so dark? They missed the mark there for me. Anyways, alongside the standard release, there's a collector's edition which does have a nice colourful box and includes enamel pins, a soundtrack, a plush, cards and paper craft diorama. You can order this now. On April 30th, Limited Run have Sam and Max Save the World going up for pre-order. This is one of the earlier Telltale adventure games, and it's the first of a trilogy of games heading to the Switch at some point in the future. This is a highly regarded game if you're into the genre, and the Switch version makes it better than ever. There's a standard edition, as well as a collector's edition for 75 bucks, and that includes postcards, mini prints, case file, hypnosis glasses, newspaper, magnet, napkin, and campaign button, which is a whole lot of tat. <laughs> sorry, what, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I probably got out on the wrong side of the bed. Uh, sorry about that. But Brent McLean and Punky Dooster have chosen this as their pick of the week. Limited Run are doing a distribution effort with Battle Axe. Once again, they have a standard edition for pre-order alongside a Badger edition. And they appear to have different artwork to the European release. You can pre-order this on April 27th. Alright, let's jump into the imports. Remember guys, if anything takes your fancy and you'd like to import it for yourself, then consider using the links below in the description and the pinned comment. If you use those links, then it also helps support this series ever so much. You guys are amazing. Last week was, in all honesty, it was the best week ever thanks to the Italian Mysterious Trilogy. Thank you ever so much. You are wonderful. And if you use our links, you can also get a very nice 5% off your order. If you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV, that's while checking out, all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV, while checking out for 5% off any physical item from PlayAsia. Star Renegades is releasing in Japan this week. Yes, I talked about the Strictly Limited version, but this Japanese release is out now, well, this week. And it has English. This is an RPG roguelike, very tactical, incredibly stylish. I absolutely love the art style here. You can't look at this and say it doesn't look fantastic. I heard on launch the Switch version was a little bit ropey, and I don't know if patches have come in or not, or if they're on this car or whatever, but let's hope, keep our fingers crossed. And if you can't wait for the Strictly Limited or in-in games version, then perhaps this Japanese version will be a nice early addition to your collection. And this is Cigar Trucker's Pick of the Week. Grisaya Phantom Trigger 1 to 5 is a pentology of short visual novels, about 3 hours or so apiece. These are very well made visual novels, so I've been told, and contains great artwork. Now, there are more than 5 games in this series, I think they're like up to 7 or 8 by now, so it's not complete, but consider it a volume 1 kind of thing. There's no western physical release, but this Japanese release does have English, so it's a great import for visual novel fans. And this is Alexander Kato's pick of the week. Alright, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Spotlight. Remember, if you're showed off in this series, then at the end of this episode, you'll be in with the chance of winning a physical Switch game. This month's prize is Kronos. Firstly, me. What do I have to show off for you this week? Well, I'm going to show off Legend of the Skyfish from Red Art Games, who kindly provided this copy for me to show off to you guys. I think we can all see the inspiration for this one. It's definitely got a bit of Zelda in its bones. I haven't actually played it, so I don't know how it holds up, but I'm definitely intrigued to give it a go. I like Zelda puzzles, so fingers crossed this is a decent one. As with all modern Red Art Games, from their website, it comes with a card sleeve, which if you slide off, 
That Jesus God give me a bloody heart attack, won't you? <laughs> Worth it for that alone. Plus, it has different interior art as well. Just chilling on a whale as you do. You can get this from redartgames.com. Sometimes their games are available at other European retailers, but without the card sleeve. But but I actually can't see this one anywhere. So if you want to order it from redartgames.com, you can also get 10% off with the code SWATCH10, which is good for anything on their website. Not an affiliate link or anything. We don't earn it. It's just a little discount code for you guys. SWATCH10. All right, on to you lot. Chris Stade wants to show off these pickups, which includes some of the more recent Amiibos and Bravely Default 2, which definitely needs to be in my collection someday. I do want to get all the JRPGs on the system. Gun Metal Otaku sent in this photo with an import classic Okami, plus Super Blood Hockey, which I featured last week. Remember, we have affiliate links for premium edition games, so if you want to pick up any of their stuff, then consider using the link below in the description. James Church, big thanks for using our links and codes for these games. Really loving the train stuff. I want to get a train there at the top since that one does have English, but it is a bit too expensive for me at the minute locally. Inactive Yeti, also big thanks for using our links and codes on this absolutely massive legendary haul of games. This guy is lapping up the double pack goodness, including Ringo Buddha, which is uh, going to be the name of my future psychedelic rock band, I think. That's a great name for it. Have a coma double. Citizens Double, Japan love their double helpings. Jay Frosty, super jealous of the new 8-bit do. I know it's 8-bit do, but I don't give a monkeys. <laughs> the Pro 2, uh, I want it really bad, but the Pro Plus is still my go-to controller. Love it. Jaytin showed off some custom fan-made instruction manuals. We've seen this dude's work before, uh, and if someone fancies linking it in the comments, then please do, because I will 100% forget to do so. Never trust a YouTuber to put links below when they say they will, unless they're going to earn money from it, of course. Executive producer Brent McLean sent in this picture showing Creeks from Super Rare alongside the vinyl for it, which is sold on the developer's website, Amanita Designs. Looks great. Cell 718 sent in this photo of some recent pickups. Scott Pilgrim up there at the top. Nice to see it out fairly quickly by their standards. I guess they had to do it with how many people ordered it. The Valiant V sent in this photo of some of last week's imports. Surprisingly, most came with loads of extra goodies. Fight of Animals, plus the collector's editions of Rolling Gunner, and Raiden 4. I don't think the West is getting that Raiden 4 Collector's Edition, so maybe one worth importing if it's still in stock anywhere. Pabs sent in this photo of some recent editions, including the lovely Golden Force, the European version, alongside some other great titles like Mummy and Hades. Azerod, I don't know if you used our links or codes, but if you did, thanks very much. Picking up some great games, Japanese versions of games with Western releases, or upcoming Western releases. Uh, nice to see them get them early though, like Cotton, Samurai Jack, Sea of Solitude, really great stuff. E Guitar Red showed off these games. The Spanish version of Blasphemous there, looking nice and long. <laughs> great to see Doom 64 as well. I believe that's up for order on Best Buy right now if you're in North America. Check that out if you missed the normal limited run version. Jose Zapata sent in this unbelievable haul. I don't know if you used our links or codes, but if you did, what a legend. Brilliant to see the English version of Gundam Genesis there. I thought this would have been bigger than it actually was, but according to our PlayAsia affiliates, uh, the Crossrays Platinum Edition sold more, whereas Genesis didn't even register in our like top 10 of the past few months, which means like I think less than 10 people bought it. Uh, I want it so bad though, but I really do have to watch my money right now. Kraken got in their first import with this very obscure Asian exclusive, Obakedoro. Don't let that age rating fool you, this is not a US release. Sometimes that does happen. This is a cute game of cops and robbers. Joan Rodriguez sent in this picture of some great action games. I really should pick up nine monkeys since I live right next to the Shaolin Temple. Well, relative to the rest of you, a couple of hours drive away. Cameron Duncan showed off the Shantae sleeve that holds all of the Switch Shantae games from Limited Run. Does this mean no more Shantae on the Switch? That would suck either way. If there's no Shantae, well, no Shantae, that sucks. If there is, well, that kind of makes this sleeve slightly, you know, jump in the gun a bit. JP showed off these two releases, Star Wars Racer, Mine's Waiting in England for Me, and Kunai the Fantastic Metroidvania. Rich Bergen showed off April Purchases, loving the Shantae. Plus, nice to see that North and South, that it did actually get a release at some point. It was delayed and then just kind of disappeared from listings. Giovanni got in the collector's edition of two shooters from Japan last week. Both have English. These could be very well worth importing. 
And finally, Michael Del Polito sent in these games. Many thanks for using our links and code, brother. A low-key import there in Air Mission Hind. Has English if you fancy some chopper action. All right, let's have a roundup. Cameron Duncan, Parsnip Coffee, Vey, Pavs, Adam Cataskilo, Lars, Andrew Kelly, Brian D. Mills, Choco Loco James, Jordan Williams, Rick Crawbert, Gun Metal Otaku, JP. All right, please send me your pictures on Twitter over at So What About Game. You can DM me or you can tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. We also have an email address where you can send it there switchwatchspotlight at gmail.com. Plus, we have a Discord, which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys, and you can send your pictures there in the submission section. The Discord server link is below. Now, last week, I did say don't send any more pictures in, please, but I guess some of you didn't get that memo. In fact, quite a lot of you didn't. Uh, so if you did send another photo in and it didn't appear in this episode, send it again, since I'm starting from a clean sheet for next week. Uh, if I'm always playing catch up, it means you know I'll keep missing more and more and more and more. Anyway, anyways, there's only one thing left to do. The winner of Kronos for this month is Champ Dancer. Congratulations, Champ Dancer. Please contact me by the same method you submitted your photo. I'll sort you out with Kronos if you don't already have it, which you probably do, I'm guessing. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physicals. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Room, Organicus, Santa Tartaruga, Alolan Jojo, Ali Zandicato, J Cross 7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Michael Del Polito, and Cigar Trucker. Thank you ever so much for your support. Plus you, yes, you watching right now. If you watch all the way here, give me a high five in the comments because the longer you watch, the more you help us grow. And I want to give you a high five back. Please check out some other other content. We have bargains on Sunday. Of course, we have physical releases on Monday. Plus, we have a ton of reviews for you to check out. We'll see you guys over there. Have a good one.